I'm Pete. I'm Stephanie, and this is The Cool Part Show, our show all about interesting 3D printed parts. Today we are on site at Lincoln Electric in Euclid, Ohio. We came here to talk about this part. This part is critical to a waterway that about 90% of the United States iron ore passes through. This part helps to hold ships in place that are passing through the lock that connects Lake Superior and Lake Huron. The Polox Ship Arrestor System Lever Arm on this episode of the Cool Part Show. Welcome to the Cool Part Show. If you enjoy the show, help us out by subscribing to our channel on YouTube and click the bell icon to get notified about new episodes. So before we get any further in this, let's just talk about what a lock is. So a lock is a man-made structure that makes it possible for boats and ships to navigate between bodies of water that are at different elevations. So you might find them on canals as well as natural waterways like rivers or lakes like what we're talking about here. And a ship might go through just one lock or it might go through a whole series depending on how big that elevation change is. So each lock is sort of this self-contained channel. There are these big uh, watertight doors, these miter gates on each end. Uh, the gates open on one side, the ship pulls in, they close behind, and then the water level inside the, the lock is changed, either raised or lowered. Once the water level is at the appropriate height, uh, the gates on the far side will open, the ship can continue on its journey. Today we are at Lincoln Electric just outside of Cleveland, Ohio to talk about a component used in the Sioux Lock System on the Great Lakes. This is an important piece of infrastructure that allows ships to connect between Lake Huron and Lake Superior. And this 3D printed component is part of the ship arrestor system inside of the Po Lock, the largest one of the Sioux Locks. It is a 3D printed replacement for a legacy casting. This part is a replica, 75% scale. The actual part is 12 feet long. Actually, there are two of them. They are in service right now in the Po Lock. Lincoln Electric's specialty is wire arc additive manufacturing, WAM, using a robot performing metal deposition to 3D print really huge metal hardware components like this one. Lincoln Electric was contracted to make these parts by the Army Corps of Engineers, which is the organization that oversees that lock system. So I want to introduce our expert for this episode. This is Clint Doherty. He is a structural engineer for the Army Corps of Engineers Detroit District, as well as the program manager for the hydraulic steel structure program. The Sulox uh, has a unique feature that's called a ship arresting system. And that a system is essentially acts like a railroad gate, if you think about it that way. It raises and lowers every time a ship is about to come through. And the system allows the, the large miter gates, which are the gates in the front of the lock that are able to open and close and retain water for the lock system to be protected from uh, an unintentional vessel impact. And so part of that system, it has a three and a half inch diameter wire rope, which is a very strong rope. And that system uh, allows to stop a 100,000 ton freighter in approximately 72 feet so that it will not impact the miter gates. So a part of that system is kind of, kind of an essential part of the of the Sioux locks to help ensure, you know, for example, the Po lock is going to continue to operate and you don't have, you know, potentially a catastrophic failure of one of the miter gates. So the lever arm itself is a component of that system. The lever arm is essentially a long beam that's about 12 feet long and it rotates about a pivot point in the middle as a lever would. And uh, it has a hydraulic cylinder that pushes on one end that applies uh, at times probably upwards of 200,000 pounds of force in order to raise and or lower it down back again. Uh, so it's kind of an important part of the operation of that system to make sure that that ship arresting system will operate. So as you can imagine, the ship arrestor system is a really important part of the bow locks. If a ship were to run into one of those miter gates and damage it, it could cause all kinds of delays for all of the other boats and ships that need to navigate through this lock system. So the Army Corps of Engineers is responsible for maintaining the pole lock. And a few years ago, they started looking at upgrading the ship arrestor system. Originally, the idea was to keep using those cast lever arms, but as they got into that upgrade work, they discovered that one of the arms was starting to fail and would need to be replaced. The original lever arm for the pole lock was a vintage piece that was original to the lock's construction. And so the existing lever arm had been there in service since 1969. 
whenever we were doing some work to re rehabilitate the ship arresting system, we discovered that there were cracks in the main center bore, which is the point at which the lever arm rotates. And so we had to do some emergency repairs of those cracks. However, we didn't believe that the, you know, the design life would be maintained with just those emergency repairs. Federal law mandates that the SULOC system stops operation from January 15th until March 25th of every year, in part for um, maintenance, upgrades, repair. The Army Corps of Engineers team did not expect to have to replace this component that had been in service just fine for decades. So as soon as they made that discovery, the clock started ticking. Service resumed on March 25th, and they had to design, engineer, commission, build, manufacture, finish, and be ready to install the replacement parts by the time the shutdown happened again in January. The specific additive process that Lincoln Electric uses is a form of directed energy deposition that is based on MIG welding. That was very appealing to the Army Corps of Engineers because they are very accustomed to specifying and accepting welded parts. Uh, most of our miter gates are welded structures. Uh, a lot of other components have been, you know, weldments or welded structures. So there's a pretty good confidence and comfort level with welding. We used a risk-informed decision-making process then to try to evaluate our alternative. So initially, the Army Corps of Engineers went down this parallel path. They looked at doing a weldment for the replacement as well as additive manufacturing for the replacement. But the speed of development with additive meant that this is ultimately the route that they chose. The actual part had to be produced in two pieces, 3D printed in two pieces, because of the limitations on the reach of the robot. The two pieces were welded together, that's okay. The whole part is welding. And that separation into two pieces actually helped with lead time. So one piece, 4,000 pounds, 3D printed in about four weeks. Another piece, 2,000 pounds, 3D printed in about two weeks. But the combined 6,000 pound piece didn't take six weeks to 3D print because that work was being done in parallel. So that four week window was sufficient to 3D print the entire component. The two pieces were then welded together and there were more steps after that. So the joining took uh, additional time to uh, deliver prep the joint, uh, do the welding. We actually also had to do some qualification of the welding between two additively manufactured parts, which took some time. We did a, a stress relief heat treatment of the part. And then we also did uh, radiographic or x-ray testing of the part uh, for final acceptance. So that as a total was about 12 weeks to get a single uh, finish built part. And so when you include <clears throat> the machining and the blasting and painting to get it, everything done and shipped to the Sulox. It took 16 weeks. Got it there uh, in December before actually the start of our uh, shutdown season. The new part made through additive manufacturing is better than the part it replaced in, in various ways. The Army Corps of Engineers designed this component to have a service life of 100 years or effectively unending service life. That reason for failure on the preceding part where the fatigue cracking was starting to set in, the cause of that has been identified and the, the Corps of Engineers traced that to an interference fit that was used to join a member that passes through this component. This version uses a different tactic, slip fit, to join that same member, um, allowing for longer performance. and then. In addition to that, by various measures, this new part delivers improved performance. The original lever arm was made of a traditional cast steel material. And so it had uh, roughly about a 65 KSI tensile strength and a 35 KSI yield strength. And that was based on kind of an older specification for you know, structural mechanical cast components. Uh, the new lever arm, is composed of a high strength, low alloy material 
that is specifically made from Lincoln's LA100 Super Arc weld wire or like a MIG wire. And that material actually has a tensile strength of roughly 100 to 105 KSI and a yield strength over 80 KSI. Uh, and one of the other aspects of the new material is that the Sharpie impact toughness, you know, the original material you might be seeing maybe 20 to 30 foot pounds at let's say a zero or negative 30 degree Fahrenheit temperature test. Whereas on the new part, you know, we were seeing upwards of 80 to 100 foot pounds. So more than let's say triple the toughness at the same temperature levels uh, than what we would see in our, in our traditional cast component. So the 3D printed lever arms offer some improvements over the original castings. They were also delivered faster than a weldment could have been. It took about 16 weeks to make those parts. They were delivered to the Sioux Locks in December 2023 and time to be installed in January of 2024. So another great story of how additive manufacturing can help meet lead time challenges. But this also points the way to how the Army Corps of Engineers could be using more additive manufacturing in the future. So this part was uh, a good a good success uh, story for us. I think the part really was what we wanted. And uh, because of that, you know, we are continuing to look at other applications where we can utilize additive manufacturing. There are definitely going to be conversations now where, you know, we are going to be evaluating the additive manufactured part in parallel with, you know, a casting or a weldment and, and have that as a viable alternative. Now, uh, I can see moving forward with the technology, having, uh, you know, 3D scanning a lot of our parts, having a digital database and library of a lot of our components. So if you need a part quickly, you know, you're, you're able to take your 3D model and, and send it to a fabricator who's able to build these parts uh, with additive manufacturing. Hopefully that will reduce some of the downtime. A lot of the aging infrastructure is, is in need of having some, some good alternatives. And I think this is really a great alternative for us to, to think about as we're moving forward with you know, rehabilitating and, and repairing and even just replacing uh, parts. I think we got this. All right, this is a scaled down version of the lever arm for the ship arrestor system found in the tow locks. The original lever arms were steel castings. Their replacements were 3D printed here at Lincoln Electric using wire arc additive manufacturing out of a high strength, low alloy steel wire. The result is an extreme example of additive manufacturing as a solution for replacement parts. Wire arc additive manufacturing, WAM, produced a component that is superior by various measures compared to the casting it replaced. And also, additive manufacturing enabled a manufacturing process allowing this part to be produced, not just 3D printed, but produced complete within 16 weeks. That allowed the Army Corps of Engineers to easily meet its time window that it had to fit for these parts, while at the same time validating the effectiveness of additive manufacturing as a replacement part solution for components like this in the future. That's it for this episode of The Cool Part Show. Thank you to Lincoln Electric for having us. This is actually not the first time that we've done episodes of the show here in this facility. If you're interested in other examples of WAM as a replacement for castings, uh, we've got two other episodes where Lincoln Electric applied this technology to repair its own equipment and keep it running. We'll drop links to those in the show notes. If you have an example of additive manufacturing as a replacement part solution, as an original component solution that you'd like to share with us, we might do an episode of the show. Email us, coolparts at additivemanufacturing.media. Thanks for watching.